I'm a podcaster, and I don't know where to go, but I gotta make an episode. Oh, I'm a podcaster, and I gotta make a podcast. <laughs> Watched a movie about a dog <laughs> called Love on a Leash. I guess we'll talk about it on... B-Mania. Mania. Bark, bark, I'm, I'm a dog. Ow, my ass. Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bizarre, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. King of the castle, king of the castle that's also a dog and lives in a house that is green. What is that about? I have no response to any of that. I'm just stunned. (laughs) Hello and welcome to B-Movie Mania. I'm your dog trainer for the evening, Jason Hulls. And with me as always are my pound puppies, Paul Brooks. (laughs) (sighs) I'm so depressed right now. I got to get me some Kung Pao chicken, man. Kung Pao, (laughs) Kung Pao. (laughs) Mike Hayes. Oh, Mike Hayes. He's such a loser. (laughs) And crazy Chris Hudson. Where the ladies at? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I am so pleased that you all had that stuff prepared for this. (laughs) Yes, folks, we watched a movie called Love on a Leash. You can watch it free on Tubi. Let's just get that right out of the way, because you should watch it. Um, Directed by Fentian. I'm going to murder that name, I know. So I'm going to call her Jennifer Ten, which was her other... Uh, name that she went by directing films it's a woman it's a woman she lived from 1939 to 2018 which means she was in her early 70s when she directed this movie. what yeah 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 Yeah. that puts a whole different lens (laughs) on those shitty adult like old people in this movie i thought i honestly thought this movie was directed by the gay guy at the clothing store no no this (laughs) nope uh, Jennifer Ten only did a few movies. Uh, she wrote a few more, but I think she only directed three. Um, IMDb says this came out in 2011. Tubi says 2013. So I'm going to go with IMDb and say 2011. I'm just going to have to agree to disagree. It had to have been filmed like six years before. <laughs> yeah. Ten years before that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yep. It yeah. looks fine. What are you talking about? No, just the tech. Everyone's got a CRTV. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, There's little hints. Yeah, it's yeah. Just it doesn't look. Hey, like listen, it was listen. From... It's tough living in Hollywood. A lot of times you don't got money <laughs> for that new plasma. Does anybody have the IMDb synopsis on hand by any chance? Love takes a furry twist in this slice of romantic comedy. A young woman falls for a stray dog with a secret. By night, it becomes a man. Follow the journey of the golden retriever and the friend who gives him a home. Ah, it's the Shatner read. It's going to be a really weird sounding read when I just leave your entire take. (laughs) Quick takes. Speaking personally, I don't know of a movie I've had a harder time not discussing before we record. Yeah. Like, I'm bursting to talk about this. Paul even threatened to block the chat because I could not wait, stop talking about this damn thing. I No, I did. Blo- <laughs> I blocked I blocked it for an hour. <laughs> yes, listeners, we have a uh, chat that we use to plan for the show, and we try not to discuss the movies before we record. It's so hard sometimes. Chris, what's your quick take? My quick take is this is a cautionary tale of what happens when you don't communicate in a relationship. And it's... It works pretty well. Sure. (laughs) Why not? Nice. I mean, there are some issues where when you go into this blind and you think your TV speakers are not working. Like I spent, (laughs) I spent like 15 minutes trying to figure out, did my, 
did my Apple TV just stop working? I see this the video, but there's no sound. What's going on? <laughs> yes, we will get into that. Paul, what do you got? Bark for us. Did you say bark for us? <laughs> well, it's like a quick take. Quick bark. Give us your quick bark. <laughs> quick barks. <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, uh, all right. I've never done this before, but I want to give it a shot. I want to do an, impre- an impression of a character from the film. Cool. All right, you ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was my impression of the room tone from Love on a Leash. Oh, yep. fantastic. Yep. It does not exist. I <laughs> watched this movie for 45 seconds. I backed out of Tubi. I restarted my Xbox because I said the sound is not working. Yeah, that's, I did the exact same thing. <laughs> I turn it back on. The sound is still not working. There is no sound in this. Well, there is. It's just randomly dropped in. Mike. Hey, you remember that time that Tim Allen did those talking dog movies? Well, this movie has done to talking dog movies what Tim Allen only wishes could he could do. It made everyone go. <laughs> We need to behave tonight. I'm going to keep you guys on a short leash. And if you're good, you get a treat. Ooh. Ooh. If you're not good, you go in the kennel. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't make me put anybody in the kennel. What if, what if we're kind of into being in a kennel? Well, then you'll be happy in the kennel. <laughs> Jay, sorry. What, what's your quick take? I, I say this with, with no sarcasm. This is one of my favorite things I've encountered through doing this podcast. <laughs> I am oh, totally bark genuine. yes. Jay, bark the fuck yes. Thank you. Okay, now let's get into this madness. Right off the bat, you guys, two of you guys have already mentioned that there's no sound in the beginning. There's not. Nothing. <laughs> Just here's some shots. If that's not enough for you, sorry. Well, let me drop this possible bombshell on you. Evidently... If you buy the DVD, there is music on the DVD. Okay, you know what? Thank you very much, because the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, somebody accidentally muted one of the tracks in Premiere and and exported this, (laughs) and the whole thing is is like missing audio. Yeah, I I really think they screwed up the export, because um, someone even, I, I found, you know, there's a little bit of online discussion about this movie, and... Somebody posted links like on YouTube. They're like, look, I'm going to prove this. I bought this DVD. Here's a picture. And here's a clip of the opening of the film. And it has music. So they just screwed up the export for Tubi and nobody fixed it. I, I, you know, I know that I I, I talk about conspiracy theories a lot on Dark Hollywood, but I believe that one 100%. Mm hmm. See, I've read that someone thought that the editor just lost some of the audio files. (laughs) <laughs> well, the editor was the director, right? No, no, no there else was said. an editor. Yeah. Oh my god! Which is baffling because I don't know if I've ever seen a film so mangled by editing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the pace of this thing, the like frantic pacing—if you can even call it that—it's like the first half hour, forty-five minutes. It's like you're trying to make sure blood isn't going to shoot out your nose because it's just hard to take. Well, well, and don't forget yeah. the times where they speed up the 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 picture. <laughs> there are a couple points where this so like really fast, and it's like, oh yeah, they just double the speed of the the video. Yeah, it's. I feel like they cracks a code for low budget filmmaking. They said we're going to make the beginning of this film go so fast <laughs> that you can't possibly get bored. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's some scenes are three shots. <laughs> Not even sometimes it's so fast. Okay. So let's, let's talk about where this starts off. Chris. Okay. We have the dog at the park and it's completely silent. What's going on at, with the dog? <laughs> well, he gets, this dog is horny, man. This dog <laughs> just wants to meet the ladies. He's a he horn is, dog. Oh, he's a, he literally the horn dog, <laughs> the horniest dog. Uh, no girls, no fun, man. No girls, no fun. The horniest horn dog that ever horned. Where are the ladies at? 
Yeah. Oh. He, oh my God. And he just can't, he's going from girl to girl, trying to place Frisbee, just sniffing at butts and just, I don't just, What about oh. the pond? Oh, and then you get the fucking talking pond. That... <laughs> A, talking A talking pond? pond? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, obviously the, the dog is talking this this entire time sort of like uh i mean ta- a talking cat style you know where like it's a dog but the dog is like giving its little quips and comments the entire time it's completely silent for stretches of time seconds you know almost minutes at a time except when the dog has a quip which you can tell it's just he was recording somewhere obviously this person doing the voiceover probably eric and Roberts they, they do bathroom. nothing yeah, and Eric Roberts, probably. <laughs> and they do nothing to <laughs> massage the ambience of the person speaking with the complete silence of the film. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's got to so, be they, they accidentally turned off a track because 100%. I was just baffled for the first I've, I'm minutes. considering actually picking up... Okay, here's another... I'm sorry, this... Much like this movie, I have a feeling that we're going to be a little all over the place, but I, this is a perfect time to talk about this. I was considering picking up this DVD after watching this movie, <laughs> and mm. there is, when you go to the website to buy it, yeah, okay, yeah. the cost on the website is $8.50 to $700, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah. you have to select yeah. what you want. So you can choose to select this movie for public-private library, public-private school, one-time online viewing, a ticketed theatrical screening, and a couple other things. Well, if you select single unit, that's eight fifty. I'm taking that to mean that's DVD. the DVD. Yeah, I think so. Right? Yeah. yeah. So then mm-hmm. I look, sure. and in the notes, it says at this moment no DVD is available for single unit. So they have it as an option to purchase, but then in their own notes say you can't purchase it. Yeah. Well, Jay, it's because the, the, the website is for the entire country of China to purchase for the citizens. For theatrical screenings, right? I mm-hmm. guess. Well, to, just to show what American blockbuster videos okay, are. Okay, yes. Is, is, Mike, I have a feeling you looked into that a little bit, right? Like, what's, what's behind? A little bit. Okay, what do you got? Well, there's a theory on Reddit, so you know it's fucking <laughs> real. Uh about just uh, just the fact that this is like possibly this is all speculation through someone else's research about this kind of stuff, but that Phoenix Pictures, who's who put this out, and a hand and these couple other companies have a Universal City California address, and this is where they they film out of and whatnot. But the theory is that this is some sort of um, film production thing to then sell in the Chinese market as quote unquote. American blockbuster films in a way to to sell it. And I don't know if it's supposed to be some sort of propaganda or not. Uh, There's some angles having watched this now about what kind of propaganda that could be. If it is that it may not be at all. All of this could be horseshit, but Mm -hmm. that's the idea. I mean, it's hundred percent. This movie paints Chinese uh, culture in a, a good light, and as if as, as, as if something that the American public is obsessed with. (laughs) It does. I could see that. Yep. So it's, you know, so it's just wild in that way. Yep. So, okay, I think we can circle back to something called the plot here. So we have the horny dog talking to the pond. The pond lays out that, you, you figure out that he, the dog has to find a woman to really love him in order for him to become a man again. Find a girl. Girl? If she only loves you. You may have a chance. Find a girl? That's my specialty. So at this point, it just sounds like this dog just really wants to get laid, but will never will as a dog. So he wants to be human solely for that reason. So he runs around the park looking for women. And again, the scenes go so fast. It's oh God. just shots put together of this golden retriever running around a park. Let, let's, let's talk about Lisa and Paula. She's listed as friend in, on IMDb. <laughs> no one ever corrected it, but her name, her, the friend's name is really Paula. Well, did you see what Lisa's name is on IMDb? No, what is the it? The actress's real name, Jana. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> Jenna Camp? No one watched the, the credits at the end of this or watched the movie oh, at all? Oh, it is! Before, Jenna Con- yeah. J- Jana Camp is listed as Jana in the, in the credits. Yeah. <laughs> it's her, she's Lisa. Yeah. It's Lisa. Yeah. All right, fine. Paul, tell us about Lisa. Uh... 
Lisa wears a lot of green. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and she's got her 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 best friend Paula. I don't know. Is that good enough? What do you, What else do you want me to say? I, I'm looking to progress the plot here. Is my I, point. I got you, Paul. Paula is making fun of Lisa for not being, you know, into men or getting laid or, you know, she's still a virgin, basically. And she's making fun of her in like a kind of basically. 1980s kind of like, Haha, virginity <laughs> sucks kind of way. Kids, it doesn't suck. <laughs> wait till marriage. Anyway. Hey, so, ki- wait, wait, kids. Hey, kids. Oh, God. No, no, no. no. Anyway. Hey, kids. No, hey, kids. Mike, I'll put you in the kennel. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Anyway, sorry. so... So, so Lisa prays to God for him to send her a man. God, please help me find a real man. I don't know how to how to break this shit down. It's just every every dude wants Lisa. That's how you break it's it down. It's madness. Paul. All right. Well, you yes. know what? I think Lisa's really cute. All right. I'm just gonna put it out there. Like, if I was living in L.A. and I was working at a department store and Lisa was, you know, there, I would no. <laughs> I'm just trying to get in the kennel. Oh my god! But oh boy! But Lisa, the problem with Lisa is she dresses so frumpily. That's true. It's awful. It's she has one cute top in the entire thing. Nothing else what is cute. Is it, it's Mike? all green. What color is this, the top? It's green. She wears <laughs> she wears at least twenty seven different what outfits. Color are I they, counted. Mike? What color are they? And there's probably more. They're all green. <laughs> but, and her her entire apartment, once we get to it, is painted green. All the walls, everything on everything is green. There's even a white wall where she's taken extra green paint and painted polka dots on it of yeah, green. Everything in the apartment that can be green is green. Absolutely. You have to say what color her car is. Her it's color. green. It's a green <laughs> bug. It's a green car. And but here's the thing. It's symbolism. This, this is why this film is so brilliant <laughs> and so smart. <laughs> Guys, let me bring it in with the, the, the first and only King Tank of the night. Oh, right. thank <laughs> God you said King. King oh. Tank. Oh, my God. I thought you were going to say something else. Guys, we... Maybe you remember the 1990s when we all knew what the color green meant. What? What did it mean? Environmentalism. Oh, what does green mean? Uh, no. Yes, in the okay, 90s. Yeah, green, yeah, yeah. green uh, means you're horny. No, it doesn't. That's red. Uh, what? Yes, it does. It and that belief, that belief has come. Th- look it up. Green horny on the internet. People think the green M M&M and M meant you're horny. All this stuff. <laughs> but what it comes from is it back in the day, people lovers who were not supposed to be together would run off and they would come back supposedly with green on their like clothes because they were rolling around in the grass. So they would say, "Oh, this this person's horny." Or they're sexually promiscuous because they have green on them because they were rolling around in the grass and got grass stains. So that's where the old adage of green meaning you're horny comes from in historical te- sense. Wow. Interesting. So you're trying to say that, that Lisa is super horny or Lisa is in a very horny world by herself, trapped in a horny world? <laughs> you know, well, Jay... I think it's a bit of both because I think the horny world is there and she's lived within it for so long that she's 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 keeping her purity, but she is wearing all the green, too. So I think she's trying to find her own place in this horny world. I like it. Hey, can I can I do the custom sound for your for the king tank? Okay, we do need this. So I will allow this. Go. (laughs) King tank. Oh. So Lisa and Paula leave. The dog goes to the gas station, and, and when she, when Lisa pulls into the gas station, she lays down. The dog lays down, and she finds the dog again. Takes the dog home, cleans it up, and tries to kick it out the door once it's not dirty anymore. But the dog just doesn't yeah. leave. Ooh. Oh, oh, you're clean now. You can go. I will be back. Be back. She comes out and she's like you're still here like that she expected the dog to let itself out but it doesn't um okay so then we have a woman who farts in a dress who wants to talk about that <laughs> so she's just so sweaty. big ass big ass is getting like clothing put on her and it doesn't fit she's really rude about it and she sucks like, but not like the she's worst curvy. she's not the She's very curvy. She is well. Curvy. She has she has a comically large ass in this shot. There are like pillows stuck up under her dress. Dump. 
truck <laughs> for an ass. <laughs> what does that mean? Pixar animates all of their women with absolute dump truck asses. Have you not seen this on Twitter? <laughs> okay, no, Paul. I'll go in the kennel, Jay. I'll go. You're not supposed to want to go in the kennel, Paul. The, that You know what? That was two strikes, okay? All right, all right. Ma'am, I told you the dress was too small for you. Yeah, no, it's it because I'm sweaty. <sighs> oh, yeah, yeah. So it's this, this woman who's very rude, <laughs> like cartoonishly so, uh, is getting trying to get fitted for a dress, and then, like, some guy, I, I believe it's at Lisa's place of employment. Correct. Yes. If I remember right, right? So this other woman's trying to do, oh, yeah, that's right, because she, she's trying to put it on, it's not fitting, and then Lisa, for some reason, is like, it doesn't fit you, woman, I can't sell it to you. <laughs> and this woman gets mad, understandably, actually, to be completely yeah. honest. Well, she, says, she says she doesn't fit because she's very sweaty. So, yes, the manager comes in and offers to sell the dress, and that whole thing is pretty much done. But the owner agrees with Lisa's approach. Kyle? Okay, is it the owner? Kyle's the owner? Yeah, Kyle's the owner. Okay, I didn't realize. I've watched this twice. I didn't catch that. <laughs> so, okay, we do get uh, the name. Like, the dog is still talking when she gets home. Uh, the the dog says his name is Alvin Flang. What? She she Yes, you didn't catch Alvin Flang? No, I thought his name was Prince. She, she names him Prince. Prince. Oh. But he's totally down with that name. Alvin That's way Fl- better than seems to be. Alvin Flang. And then a critical scene here. Critical. <laughs> the, she takes the dog shopping and they discover it can pick out matching clothes. Oh my god. It picks out green clothes for her. Which another funny part of the movie is that the dog sort of echoes what we're thinking in one respect. Uh, yep. That... He's like, why is everything green in this house? Why do you wear so many green clothes? Yeah. He even sarcastically says, why don't you wear more green? Yeah. I guess it would, this would also be a good time to point out that the dog is a total dick oh when God. he's in, in his internal dialogue. Like, he's so mean. Yeah, he's a dick. I mean, some real 2011 vibe, vibes here. And also, is this the scene... Where the dog gets kicked for no good reason. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a man kicks the... You don't actually see the dog get kicked. No, they treated the animals very good in this movie. They did. There's <laughs> okay. a well, bunch of, of course clothes on the floor, and the dog is rooting through the clothes, and the manager kicks the dog, and then Lisa gets mad and asks the dog to find a matching part of the outfit, and this talent agent sees it and wants to sign the dog. And for some reason, Lisa wants nothing to do with this. There is a bunch of people trying to get clothes they're trying to buy and pick out, right? Yeah. Right. But these clothes aren't on no, a it's rack. It's just on the a pile. Fucking ground. They're a pile. It's a <laughs> pile on a floor. I don't know why I didn't think about that till just now. <laughs> me, me either, until right now. What the fuck is going on? This is the part in the movie where I was like, was this written by an AI? <laughs> like, oh, I had the same thought, dude. Like, did like, somebody it, force it, a bunch it, of like romantic comedies oh and God. animal movies into an AI and make it right yeah. one? Because that's what this felt like. Mm, you know, Jennifer Ten sounds like a sort of artificial intelligence name. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. she really die, or did mm-hmm. she transcend? She's been singularityed. <laughs> More like Jennifer Ten Point <laughs> Ooh, sick burn. <laughs> <laughs> We need to talk about Frank. Frank is her other suitor. Lisa agrees to go out with Kyle, the shop owner. Fair. He's and, hot. And, but then Frank comes into the picture in the store. Frank. And yeah, he's like, hey, can you pick out some clothing for me? Oh. And then so and creepy. she's looking. She's standing. Sorry. Sorry, Jay. Can I just go ahead and say yeah, it? Yeah, go. Go. She's she's standing next to a rack full of pink clothes. So we're Paula shops, obviously. Yeah. And and to, in order to he goes something you'd wear. And so she walks over to the rack of green clothing. And not just like not bright popping green, not a variety of darks and lights. It's just this drab gross olive green that is so fucking boring. Because that is how clothing is organized in stores. By color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they put the shit garbage on the back wall where Lisa shops. But I want to emphasize here how creepy Frank is. Oh, God. Thank you, sir. See you soon. See you soon, Lisa. Well, to be fair, figure it out, Lisa. He's hitting on you. Poorly. And also, also to be fair, he he doesn't know how to act like a human because of who he was raised by, which we will meet oh, yeah. later. Oh, I or, love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. There are so many loose threads in this movie, but that's one of them I really liked. Shortly thereafter, meet Rita, 
who I think is probably uh, the most villainous character. Yeah. I thought she was a gypsy when she first came in. I Look, didn't she's know a, what she, accent. She's that a Yenta, was. right? She's a. I think she's like a a, a, a Russian uh, Jewish person yeah. and trying to do matchmaking and stuff, right? Oh, and very pushy matchmaking at that. He is good enough for you. Here is his phone number. You call him. That's it. She is aggressive about getting Lisa to find a man. And so it comes out that I don't, I didn't even write down the relation, but Frank is like her husband's or her uh, neighbors, neighbors, high school, high school friends, friends, former yeah. roommate or something. Some weird thing. And so <laughs> through school, all of this twisted, <laughs> this twisted relationship, <laughs> Rita tried to sick Frank on her. <laughs> it's a good way of putting it. And I found it funny because Rita said her mom, Lisa's mom would be here doing and saying all these things if it wasn't for that L.A. smog. <laughs> if not for L.A. smog, she'd be here herself help you find Matt. Is that why mom is sick the rest of the movie? Yes, I think so, so yeah. because of the L.A. smog. Is this a fucking room-style illness? Yeah. It. Oh, God. Yep, it's because of the smog. <laughs> hey, Paul, I just want you to know I mentioned the room and didn't say it sucked. Uh, well, there's a first time for fucking everything. Hey, but, but watch this. The room sucked. See how Mike just said the room sucked? <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't God say that. It. Holy wow, shit. Mike, why would no, you no, say no, that? No, 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 no. Like how could guy. you, Mike? Very rude, What Jay. is this horse Very shit? Very rude. I, I, Mike said Thank it. you, I mean, Paul. No, what? No, God Can damn I get it. into another right. thing that really confused me about this movie? Yes, go ahead. There's so much, Chris. <laughs> yeah, we're coming up to the point where we find out why Frank is such a weirdo. And I thought this was their first date. That's how bad the editing is. <laughs> oh, yeah, Sam. And, Good point. Yeah. And it's, they're having dinner with Frank's mom. And then she says, <laughs> I think it's time to have this discussion. I don't see any reason why she would say no. It's like she goes on and talks about all these conditions that she has to meet to marry her son. She cannot have any children of her own. No children? Yes. Furthermore... In order for her to not become pregnant, she must agree to have her tubes tied before the marriage. Wait, that wasn't their first date? Yeah, it totally, no, I got my second watch, I caught it. Like, there's, there's some, I don't know, you have to watch this about five or six times to really understand <laughs> that. <laughs> there's a lot of layers to this. That, that Lisa man. has been seeing Kyle and Frank for a while at this point. But yeah. it's not, you oh. don't get that sense through any sort of like editing yeah. or acting a, or scenes. There's a throwaway like line that. at some point where, where yeah. she says to the dog, I guess I'm just going to have to date them both. And like, that's it. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've all whispered to our pets that thing. <laughs> but yeah, the mom, uh, whatever his fucking name's mom, at some point offers legitimately says she was going to do it uh tie lisa's tubes i've done it for thousands of women because whoever the stepmom is cannot have any children of her own because her grandson was raised with all of the best scientific technology <laughs> yep and they want him to be the president of the united states <laughs> it's it's it is this scene right here they, I, I, I got this. I'm looking it up right now just to confirm. Yes, yes. They asked Neil Breen to write one scene, and this is it. <laughs> See, okay. That's a lot of I pressure actually, for a first date. I, I'll be honest. I really liked this whole Frank and mom <laughs> sequence because it really felt like a horror movie. Yeah. yeah. Like, it oh, felt yeah. like a yeah. terrible reveal of, like, something like society-ish is going to happen or something. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. But oh. it's just, it's weird we just get, and creepy. We just get and back I, into a weird dog movie after this. I don't think that the, I, I don't know what you guys think. You can laugh if you want, but like, I don't think the acting in this scene is bad. No, it's like fine. Frank is no. a stiff and he's subservient to his mom. The mom is creepy and authoritarian. Mm -hmm. And Lisa is sitting there being completely normal, trying to take it in. I thought that yeah. scene, this scene is great. I love the, the, the it. It is, was cartoonish. It was yeah, great. I mean, it was good, but the problem is there's so many, it's just all over the place. I mean, it's, it's almost room esque where the where there are these plot cul de sacs that just kind of like mm. don't lead oh, yeah. to anything constantly. else. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, the whole the whole movie I kept going. 
this is what people need to be watching instead of the room. Like every <laughs> no. scene. Uh, I will be honest, Mike. I thought the same thing. Well, yep. Well, speak, speaking of plot cul-de-sacs, I really, really felt sorry for Kyle. Kyle is the Asian yes. guy. Yes. Oh my God. Kyle's okay. Are Asian we getting guy. there? Are we going into this? Okay. Let me, put, let, let me but get I didn't get there. to talk about how the mom was going to tie the tubes, but she's not qualified anymore because she is technically a retired gynecologist <laughs> and not <per> currently practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that at all, yeah. but she's and still going to do it. <laughs> that is, I believe the last time we, they are in the picture. Lisa's done with them pretty much at that point. Yeah. The whole point is this talking dog, but it, <laughs> <laughs> this movie knows uh, the the pacing is so strange because like they wait to get into Lisa and the talking dog thing till like the second act and which is technically decent plot point issue stuff that you could do but like within act 1 it's also these plot cul-de-sacs that are a total mess so it's like it's doing it right, but also wrong. I don't know if it's necessarily uh, the pacing as it is like they just forgot to get certain shots. And so the editing uh, is just a mess. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Paul, guys. forgot implies they planned on doing it in the first <laughs> okay. place. Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Speaking. What's up? Speaking of plot cul-de-sacs, I feel yeah. really sorry uh, for Kyle. Right. Oh, Chris, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving you a treat. <laughs> Chris, here's your first treat for keeping us on track. This is a very heartfelt scene. I, I agree, it Chris. I, I I felt for Kyle here, and and, and I um, I appreciated his acting in this scene. Mm -hmm. It's the scene. It is we're one of about. the better acted scenes of the film. Yeah. And it gets really, Chris. Now, while you were watching this, and I think you were texting me during it, and you said, "Wow, I didn't expect this to get this heavy." Yeah. Is this what you were referring uh, to? No, uh, I was going for the uh, the suicide attempt later. That's the heavy part. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, let's just... Can, can I get <laughs> well, into this, this, does this, set the scene, yeah. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, Kyle comes over to Lisa's apartment, which is covered in green, and... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, oh, God. just goes for it, proposes, and says, will you marry me? Puts his heart out there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, as a guy... Props, you know. <clears throat> Again, um, the editing implies this is their first date. <laughs> Which, yes, it's not. But <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, you know, he basically says, like, hold on a second. You know, like, you would still be able to date whoever you want to, you know, do whatever you want to. It's not Sleep a big deal. Sleep with whoever you want to. Wear green yeah. whenever you want to. Because <laughs> the thing is, I'm not physically attracted. I'm not attracted to you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> what and a killer she line. Physically, she physically turns around in disgust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my wife was watching this with me the second time, and she just, like, grabbed my wrist when he said that. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> she was like, oh my god. My family is, is very old school. Old money. Listen, they, they would never accept my being gay. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, Kyle says, well, he, do, he doesn't, you know, he, he never comes out and actually says it. But basically, he says that he's gay. He says he's not attracted no, to any women. He does say it. He, he, does does say it. it. Yeah. he literally yeah. absolutely says it. Jay already put the clip in. <laughs> <laughs> he Mike? says he's gay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he says he I'm does. gay. God, I miss it. You know, this is a movie. Credit where credit is due. You could watch this five or six times and pick up on a bunch of new things. Oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I, I, that's all I want to yep. say. This is, where, this is where my opinion of this Chinese propaganda changed a bit because initially reading this original conspiracy theory, I thought it was kind of a, whatever we're trying to sell show. It sounded like it was going to be like, we'll show how America's bad to China or whatever it is. But maybe what this is, is this is propaganda to be like trying to pr push a progressive co propaganda in a m much more conservative and, um, homophobic to be honest culture that is that is the the, the general at least the government of china's uh thing mm -hmm. and so maybe that's what this is trying to do be like hey look at this guy's cool i i, I, did, right. I did not pick up on any of this if this is well, truly it's, it's a thing pretty, it is truly a well i don't I think mike's theorizing now but there is like theory that there's some propaganda issues yeah. with this movie 
Um, yeah, this is my theory because it. This seems like something weird for the state of China to pr- promote that this guy seems like a good well, guy, but he's uh, gay because they are ag- aggressively anti-homosexual. I, I didn't realize that there was any Chinese element to this. This this looks like somebody who moved to Los Angeles and decided that he, that he wanted to try to make movies. That's. I mean, I did no research oh, yeah. at all. I mean, the, it, oh, that is fair. possible, though. I mean, it, there it is possible. Yeah. All of the propaganda. Like making this movie for China for this reason, all that stuff is theory. So you could it's be right. It's all theory. But when you eventually get to the fact that they are really excited about going to a mystical Chinese rock garden right. uh, for as a thing and how it's the coolest thing in the world, you're like, oh, okay, they're all into like Ch- America loves Chinese culture and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like it, it pushes that uh, quite a bit. Lisa, I would take the best care of you. Anything you want, everything you need. Furs, diamonds, any luxury for the rest of your life. This is one of the heaviest scenes of the movie. Lisa turns him down because she needs true love. And he says, you will literally be saving my life. Yeah. Because my family is old school. You'll never have to worry about another thing in your life. I Mm -hmm. will pay for everything, but I need a child. And we'll do it scientifically, like in vitro. Like... I won't touch you. And she's like, I just can't do it. And then he sadly, like sadly <laughs> leaves her apartment forever. Ugh. And it's an effective scene. It's, yeah. it's strangely, yeah. it's this whole thing. This, this is another, one of those subplots. that's just like, yo, this is pretty heavy, like heavy material. And it's dropped in the middle of this weird ass talking dog movie. <laughs> But I don't have a sex life for years. My wife doesn't turn me on anymore. Okay, but Chris, I will let you talk about Mort, the manager who shows up at her house directly oh after Kyle Oh my god, games. here we go. So the manager is a fucking creep. He is drunk and wasted and just lets himself into Lisa's apartment and tells him he loves her and... Yeah, sure he's married, but he has no sex life. He's not even turned on by his wife. But he does like Lisa. So Lisa should totally bang him. And Lisa is understandably upset and calls for Prince, the dog. Well, why doesn't Mort just go see a prostitute? It's not safe. (laughs) And it's not safe to see a hooker. Well, okay. Well, thankfully, thankfully we've got the dog to run up and save her. (laughs) Thank you, Mike. Though, Though in the most... He the dog is worse. The the worst <laughs> character in this scene is the yeah. dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dog is because so the dog runs up the stairs rude. and he goes, "Hey, back off! She's mine. Yeah. Back off! She's mine!" Yeah. As he knocks the guy <laughs> away. The Lisa's crying on her green couch. <laughs> the dog is fucking singing a song and just oh, like, and just, tries to make his move. Uh, yeah, try, by yeah. licking her she's face totally... while she's sobbing over nearly being raped. Yeah. It's golden time. Hey, why is he gay? Why is Kyle gay? I gotta make my move. Kyle gay? No. No way. Everyone's after me and you a damn dog. Get out of here. I just want to sleep. Oh my God. The dog internal monologue is the most tone deaf thing yeah. I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. So I question. Think, I think this is where I texted you about things getting dark, Jay. Okay. Question. Okay. I, I, I don't know if we talked about this or not. Was this movie written by the director or not? Yeah. Yes. 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 Well then what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. This is her take on America's uh, big blockbuster I mean, Culture, she's I technically not wrong, you know. P- women obviously deal with this all the time. They just don't have sentient dogs to save them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to get into the a little bit into the dark part now, Paul. And I want you to go with me into the darkness. All right, I'll go. But <laughs> all right, Paul, you get to talk about the part where Lisa tries to OD. What, what? is she OD on? What do you mean, what? Pills. Yeah, well, what kind of pills? She doesn't look like... Big ones. This... Big fucking pills, no, she, Chris. Weren't you she, watching the she movie? She doesn't look like someone who would, like, have a stash of, you know, potentially dangerous drugs. What? She lives in goddamn Hollywood. Paul, open your medicine cabinet. Paul's got, like, 1,200 <laughs> oh, different types of pills. They were there when he moved the fuck in. He <laughs> lives in Hollywood. Paul has donkey Prozac, badger Prozac, yeah. 
duck Prozac. Yeah. Well, you know, horse okay. Prozac. The, the dog runs out to the road, lays in the road. A car right. stops. The guy follows the dog in. The guy calls nine one one. Thank you. Yay. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah, Mike, yeah. you get a treat. Mike, can you make a chewing sound for me? So here, this is a big part. She, Lisa, is so upset. The dog's upset. They're in the rain at the park, <laughs> and Prince turns into a large naked man. <laughs> oh my God, that's where we are. Oh yeah. Christ! Ugh. Yeah, it's this is a tough one. This is like I said, a lot of layers. Well, it's you know, I mean that is what he's been working towards the entire time because Lisa has been having so much trouble with the men in her life. Because, quite frankly, men are assholes. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of truth in this whole thing right here. She mm -hmm. gets to a point where she says, Prince, um, I'm swearing off men. You are the only man in my life. I am sticking with you, baby. And that's kind of what does the trick. Right. And the funny thing is, is that she quickly learns that he is a dog because he was a cheating playboy. So he was the exact yep. same way that all of these other men in her life are behaving. See, I want to. I really like, want to know Prince's backstory here. I was like, just going to say this. Person... This thing is ripe for a prequel. Yeah. yeah. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> yes. Give Give me a love on a leash, buddies. <laughs> and she accepts. His, like, she is into it. She says, "Oh, God answered my prayers," and then she like passes out. So you've got <laughs> yeah. Lisa passed out being held by a naked dude at night in the middle of a park. She is super into him. I mean, she sees mm -hmm. him for the first time and it is love at first sight. She's all about love it. at first bark, love at first bark. Yes. This is the point where I wrote in my notes that it's good to watch this movie on Tubi because I think you need the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You need that minute I to just, Think about what you just saw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we get a sort of montage of their relationship. No, he's a man at night, dog during the day. Wait. Yes. Yeah, and that and that is explicit. That is what the, the magic pond says. Yeah. He's basically a were dog. The pond does tell him here that he needs to learn to be a husband. Because the dog keeps saying, All right, I found a woman. And the pond's like, it's not enough. Now you need to learn to be yeah, a husband. The pond keeps and like moving the, the finish line a little further it does. and further. The, yeah. the pond is, like most of the rest of the world in this film, trying to enforce these very rigid gender and cultural roles. <laughs> the pond says, you need to learn to be a husband. You need to learn to make money and provide for your wife. It's, it's a really sort of old school thinking type of pond. So Prince's goal here is to make money. So he himself contacts the agent from the clothing store and wants to get into a dog food commercial. Wait, you skipped right over my favorite scene. Your favorite God scene? Jesus it, Christ. Jay. Jay. You know, Jay, well, maybe no you idea. need to go to the what kennel, the Jay. Fuck? All right, I'm going to put myself in the kennel <laughs> while long enough for Chris to tell us his favorite scene. Chris, fucking do your thing. Speaking of a plot cul-de-sacs, my favorite scene is okay. So we get a little, <laughs> we get a little sort of montage of their relationship, I guess, after the dog talks to the magic puddle. And oh my god, why did you skip over this, Jay? You bad dog. And, Please continue, and, and Chris. Prince is cooking dinner. He's making pork chops, and he's got four oh. pork chops. He takes two of them and puts them in the doggy bowl for tomorrow. That is drunk. That has drunk me yeah, all the yeah. time. I order <laughs> breakfast from a, a delivery late at night because I want it in the morning. And then Lisa comes up behind him with a doggy leash. And yeah, we get our little BDSM photo shoot. Come on, Mike. You got to have a kink tank for this. It is Ooh. sexy. I didn't have one for this. Jay, let me let you out of this kennel here. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it is cramped in there. I, I don't want any of you to have to go back in. And now we get to the relationship problem. Yes, Prince does end up in the commercial for China Girl Dog Food. and <laughs> With ninjas. With ninjas. And he gets a little hurt, which is how this whole thing comes out. And he's doing his own stunts. Prince gives her the money while a dog. And she looks through the, she looks through the case 
and the dog says, Hey, don't <gasps> spend it all on green clothing. <laughs> I, it's good advice. It is. Now we're coming up to the really weird part with her friend. Lisa's trying, like, Paula comes over, so something happened, and she needs a shower oh, or something. Oh, God. And, and Lisa's trying to hide Prince from from Paula, but Paula is just super snoopy. I think it's really offended that Lisa has a friend over. Furious, like, yeah. to the point where it ends their it relationship. Ends their friendship, yeah. They don't see each other yeah. for, what, like 80 or 90 years or something? <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> it's beyond that, because... At the beginning of the movie, uh, Paula is basically making fun of Lisa for being a virgin, right? Mm -hmm. And when she finds out that Lisa got it on, she gets pissed. She's like, you know, you always made me feel so bad about all this, all this high and mighty Miss Virgin stuff all these years. And you're just a hypocrite. No. You're just no. you're just a hypocrite, Lisa. Why is Paula so mad at Lisa for not being a virgin anymore? It doesn't make any sense. Lisa's mom shows up into town with terrible Rita in tow, and they go out to dinner, <laughs> and a bunch of men at this Mexican oh restaurant fight over Lisa, <laughs> and it quickly comes out that they paid these men to dance. I, I believe With I Lisa. believe one of those guys uh, when when they're fighting over her I believe one of them said Lisa you're tearing me apart. <laughs> <laughs> damn the it! connection had to I be made. I wanted to say it. <laughs> oh, God damn it! My it, notes are a little further Chris? down. I was going to throw that in. Chris, you get a treat for that. Oh, arr, arr, arr. No, it's right there. Shit! No, mine's right here. Except mine says. Lisa, you're tearing me a bark. No, no treat. <laughs> was, Mike, I like the pun. All right, I'm going to give you a treat. No. <laughs> nom, 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 hey, Jay, nom, can nom, I get nom, a treat? I have a note here. What is it? This this is where I wrote down. <laughs> my note just says, Rita can go <laughs> fuck herself. <laughs> yeah. That, that deserves yes, two treats. Paul, you do get a legitimate that, treat for that. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, that lures a, deserves a treat. I enjoy the fact in this film that Lisa does actually stand up for herself. She yeah. does say to yes. her mom and to Rita, like, this sucks. You suck. Stay out of my life. You know, like, I'm glad that she does that. She doesn't just let them run her life. They are literally, like, trying to... Yeah, they're at this dinner, which, by the way, they're... I don't know what is with the David Lynch esque synchronized eating. <laughs> I <laughs> oh, love no. that. That was awesome. Through this whole thing. But they basically. Oh, it's awful. They don't, <laughs> so they don't ask for Lisa's permission or uh, Prince's permission whatsoever. They just say, why don't we, you know, let's go to the courthouse tomorrow and you guys can get married. They're, they, they have such a hard on for Lisa getting married. And it's very 90 Day Fiance. They don't care who it is. Just let's fucking do this thing. Well, well, Lisa's mom yeah. earlier even said, I hear you're dating two men. You should be dating five or six men. I was almost at a point where I'm like, is this a statement about polygamy? Like, what are we, what are we trying to say here? It's intense how much they want her to get married. And they all go to the courthouse the next day. And clearly... Prince isn't there. Well, he, do, well, he does show there. up in dog form. But as a dog. dog. Yeah. yeah, as a dog, because yeah. that's the only thing he it's can do. It's the daytime. Do. Well, hey, yeah. well, I, I mentioned earlier on in my quick take about the powers of communication. Any sort of communication would have fixed everything about this movie. It's true. I do want to point out the fact, though, uh, that the dog is depressed and wants to go get Kung Pao chicken. That was my quick take. I need some Kung Pao chicken. I gotta get me some Kung Pao, man. Kung Pao. Prince, I'm leaving. Kung Pao. Hell yeah, baby. Well, this part's hilarious because, you know, at some point he turns back into a human and Lisa's there in her green car to wait for him. He's just covering his <laughs> junk with more green leaves. <laughs> Nothing else on. Just, just straight up. Like he's a always shot naked. Full, full frontal, except oh, yeah. this big like, package of green leaves. That he's <laughs> I'm very so Adam and Eve. Oh, God. I, I wanted myself a little peeky peek of there, you know. <laughs> hey, yeah. Oh, my God. This got brought up to me earlier watching this, too. Yeah, I mean, he's a good-looking guy. You know, we get to see his titties <laughs> and stuff like that. You see his butt, but, too, in one um, scene. And his buttocks, but also he has dyed his hair the same color as the dog has. Yes. <laughs> just a heads up to everyone out hey, there. Hey, just, just as an aside real quick, uh, the actress who plays Lisa and the actor who plays Prince uh, got married in real life. 
No. Did they really? oh, off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. And uh, as far as I could tell through online research, they're still together. Right That's now, awesome. swear on the doggy Bible. Does that happen or are you doing a little bit? Oh, no, I'm not doing a bit. That's true. Oh, I, I love that. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about Rita again, because, Mike, this is definitely where you want to see her get her comeuppance. Because uh, <laughs> she fakes an illness, gets in the house. Prince goes, oh, no, what are you okay, Rita? She's like, oh, I'm feeling dizzy. I was driving my daughter to the airport. I can't drive anymore, right? Please, Lisa, could you drive my daughter to the airport? I'll stay here and get better. And... Prince, you stay with me too. This is where she starts talking to Prince. She, Lisa's like, okay, I'll go help. The, Lisa has to drive a daughter who is running late to a flight to LAX, maybe Ontario, but probably LAX, and is trying to catch the flight. But Rita, this selfish bitch of a woman, fucking just this it's weird classic, fucking Mike Grant. insane thing that she's doing where she wants to try to find out what's weird about this prince guy because he didn't show up for a fucking wedding that they <laughs> planned on their own and it's absolute <laughs> fucking dog shit it's pardon the pun but it is dog shit <sighs> it's very true all of that is very very true uh, i mean maybe 96 percent of, of that is true but if you're if you're on Van Nuys Boulevard and you're and you're turning right, Paul, we're not talking about going LA to geography Oaks anymore. And you're right, way Paul, go in far the kennel. away from LAX. Paul, get in the kennel. <laughs> you got your wish. You're going in the kennel, Paul. All right. So Rita ends up chasing Prince. Yeah, we get one of the fast forward bits. The one of the fast forward bits. One of the best bits of the movie <laughs> when oh, Prince the tail. Runs into a bathroom, and as he turns around, you see a dog tail sticking out of his pants. He slams the door oh, and God. comes out as a dog to lose Rita. It's <laughs> one of my favorite parts oh, of the it's film. It's so great. It's so It's dumb. so good. Lisa has not only lost her best friend, Paula, but also her mom and Rita. She has no one left except for Prince. Okay, Paul, I'm going to let you out of the kennel. Here you go. All right. Chris. Talk about the woman that she meets in the park. Oh, yeah. So uh, Lisa's in the park, and uh, I don't remember exactly why she's there. I, she's just whole, there. It doesn't matter. There's no reason. There's no she's, re just, yeah, she's just yeah, She's just wandering into a playground without children like a fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she sees this, uh, this uh, Chinese woman and her kids, and she's talking about the kids, and she gets a little sex advice. Lisa asks an innocent question. Like we've all asked someone who has <laughs> adorable kids. You jokingly ask facetiously, uh, how'd you get such cute kids? And this woman leans over and then answers it with exciting sex. <laughs> like the answer is supposed to be ha ha ha. I know, right? They're yeah. cute. But no, this woman just goes, I fucked a guy crazily. <laughs> <laughs> so she attacks Prince and tells him that exciting sex leads to exciting children or some bullshit. And Prince is like, nope. <laughs> yeah. So she wants to have kids right then and there in the car. And Prince says no, essentially because he's afraid that they're going to turn out like him. Where dogs. Where dogs. Where dogs. Yeah. The great it's way to put fair. it. fair. <laughs> yeah. It is very fair. And then they have a little rift that they have to then repair. So, okay, I want, we don't really need to spend a lot of time talking about it, but they go, Prince decides it'd be a fun idea to go to this Chinese, uh, dildo thing, like rock garden. It's a rock, oh, rock museum. Rock garden. It's like a Chinese rock a museum. museum. Yeah. And he can't get in, but she goes anyway and just looks. That's about all. <laughs> she that loves there. it. That's what we love in America. <laughs> yeah. We love our rock. I mean, museum. I don't think we have a problem with them, but I just feel like it was amplified a lot about how into <laughs> well, it there, people are. There was Mike, to your point, there was an interracial couple there in the rock yeah. museum. They make a point of showing a happy relationship between an Asian man and an, and a Caucasian woman. Yeah. So I, maybe you're, no, I think, something. I think it is supposed to be like a progressive, uh, uh, agenda that is being pushed into the, uh, the Chinese market. And I think that's fantastic, which is awesome. That's awesome. So, Later on, Lisa has an opportunity. It's her only opportunity to become a department <laughs> manager. This is her dream. <laughs> it's a huge it's promotion. Her dream. So they're going to go to dinner with her boss, but it's during the day. Mm, it's, it's but it's a cloudy, to be cloudy day. So Prince is like, yeah. uh, I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. I don't like this. This is where that rule changes, goes. where they're just like, oh, can, well, I guess you said it was in there earlier, Chris, but mm-hmm. it's not what the magic pond said. No, so. no, the magic pond had nothing to do with that. I, I mean, really, it kind of feels like Prince is extrapolating this information. We don't know. The, the, the puddle didn't say shit about this. And so far, it's just right. been every day he turns into a dog. Who knows? <laughs> and so they go to a very weird lunch. Lisa. I didn't know that your husband was so handsome. Well, and I love the fact that the the boss clearly wants his children to take over the, his chain of five department stores, and he's angry that his daughter <laughs> is a doctor. <laughs> this is one of the highlights of the film, for sure, because they're mingling, everything's fine, and uh, Lisa has gotten her promotion, but then, uh-oh, <laughs> the sun comes out. And right in front of the boss's son (laughs) and probably the only CG effect that isn't just like little CG pieces of confetti. Prince morphs into a dog. Oh my God. Dad, Prince just became a dog. Big deal. I'm Alvin Schwein. (laughs) The son flips out. Rightfully so, because a man just turned into a dog in front of his face. Yeah. And Lisa flips out and falls into the Does she fall or did she just jump in? I had... Well, it's kind of half oh and half. God. She's she's like, whoa, oh, and, but then looks like she jumps. I I, I thought she might so have tried to Prince... distract from what happened. I thought she was trying to like cover. That's it up. very possible. She did a pretty I, shitty I mean, job. Of I that. guess you could try. Oh, of course. <laughs> and so Prince jumps in to save Lisa, and and, and says really nice things her. to her. He says such nice things. He says, "All right, grab on, you pizza face cinder block." No. Dick. <laughs> oh you guys may have noticed in previous scenes the makeup artist or whoever it was came along and dabbed a little like red a couple red things on Lisa's face in order to make it look like she had pimples on her face because she was stressed out so that is why no, he called her a pizza what? face yeah. Oh, Paul! She, no, Paul's that's, pulling us. No, that's, that's, that's true. Shit. She had flawless skin the whole time. Mike, I agree. But that's uh, why they had to put little dots on her face. Did they really? That's I didn't know. One hundred percent. Not making it up. Well, hey, either either way, Prince the dog sucks, and he's. This isn't the first time he's been a jerk to her. Like all through the movie, every time he's a dog, he's just kind of an asshole. Except when he gives her money. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's some serious problems now. And she's crying about how she needs a man day and night. And he finally then, here, here's where here's where the myth changes again. Because he says, well, I could die and then be reborn. Then I could be a man. When he said that, I felt like the rug was pulled out from under my heart. So Prince leaves the house. He's depressed. Lisa's sleeping. He decides to turn back into a dog. So the next day, Lisa finds the note and she's sobbing. The note says uh, pretty much like I'm, I'm a dog and <laughs> picks it up. Prince I'm a dog. is, <laughs> yeah, Prince is mad at the pond and he's like, I'm done. No more. And we got to take a deep breath here. Cause then <sighs> as Lisa is running around the neighborhood looking for Prince. I've, I've <laughs> never been more happy. Prince realizes that he loves her and that he made a mistake and he's running back to her. It's a real bittersweet moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine with the dog getting hit. Absolutely. Fuck Prince. I was not fine with it. I was stunned by what happened. I mean, I did not, I did not see it coming. This is one of those moments in the movie where, again, I was watching it with my wife the second time through, and her jaw was hanging open. Right. Yeah, I mean, BSG season finale sort of moment right here. Look, okay, this is where things go. I mean, I don't know if I want to say more No, crazy, for sure. But... I mean, you think that that's it. Like, you okay. think that it's going to be a tragic ending. And nope. then it goes fucking off the rails. <laughs> you don't see the dog die technically. You see it like bloodied on the street and you're like, is this good or bad? And you're like, surely no. Surely no, the dog isn't dead. You don't kill a dog in a movie, especially like this. <laughs> but then then it eventually just says years later and she doesn't have the dog. And you're like, oh, the dog's done dead. But not like five years later. Like 50 <laughs> years later. 
She it's, she's got gray hair now. She's old. <laughs> she's old. As and shown by the gray hair. Paula returns and it's okay, the makeup isn't great. So you're like, all right, Paula has some kids. She's got They're four grand kids. kids They're grandkids, Jay. Rent grandkids. Yes. You're right. Well, that's my point. Like at first you're like, are they her kids? <laughs> like, what is this? And then when Paula comes in and realizes Lisa's still there, they talk and catch up a little bit, and you learn that those are her grandchildren. <laughs> so surely it's yeah. been like fifty yeah. years at least. Also, and and forgive me if this is the wrong point to interject this, but Paula just walks the fuck in. Uh, oh, everybody does. Why no? Well, that's we didn't talk about the fact that there seems to be no fucking front door on this <laughs> house, this apartment, because no. everyone just People walks walk in. in but especially now, she comes in. And she's like. Is this for rent? And you're like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> cool. And I love this because they start talking. And, and so Lisa finally lays it all out for Paula about what Prince is and the mythology of what they do and how it's all worked. And then, you know, Prince would be our age if he came back. Oh, no, honey. His age would count from the, the year that he died and was reborn. No. Yes. I never thought about it that way. No shit! <laughs> In like 50 years, you never considered the fact that he would be like half your age. She's thinking with her dick, Mike. Mm, baby. They catch up. They She doesn't rent the apartment. No. No. But there's another knock at the door. Or someone, I should say someone who just walks in. There's <laughs> no knock at the door. <laughs> well, there's a knock, but the guy walks. He walks in, in and knocks on the fucking wall inside. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and it is Prince, but uh, he's the same age as he was when he died. What? What? How is the same guy? Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me explain this for Paul. <laughs> let me explain this for Paul. <laughs> old Lisa. Old Lisa is renting her apartment. Young prince, re, young reincarnated prince comes in and they reunite. And as they go in for an embrace, prince's hair suddenly gets gray. So now he is also old. <laughs> but they go, yep. they get married in the park with no minister, no witnesses, nothing. Nothing but a green fucking wedding dress. <laughs> yep. And as, and as <laughs> he kisses his bride... They both turn into young versions of themselves again. What? It's true. <laughs> Credits. And, yeah, Credits. It's, it's they. They're in. They're in the park getting married. Green dress. They yakety sack speedy kiss each other. They look at the camera, and then it slowly says the. And rating time. Rating time. Thank you for going through this with me. I. I was not sure what we were getting into because I had never seen this movie. That's astonishing, Jay. Whew, I can't wait for this. I, I've been waiting for a long time and I'm excited to see what you think, what your rating is. We are going to rate this movie 1 to 100 Pizza Face Cinder Blocks. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Chris. Oh, man. This movie is fucking weird. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know. This, this is one of those movies that was made from a pure place i think I, but it's just yeah. so the execution is just so poor but it just really stands out and makes it even better in a lot of ways like mm -hmm. there's no way this could have been a great movie but it, it comes from a place of real honesty and heart and oh man and it fails on every single level <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fucking fun and just you can't look away and you uh -huh. <clears throat> and you you really need to watch this with your friends like force your friends to watch this thing because it it mm -hmm. really does deserve it i'm not gonna say it deserves the 9.8 on imdb but uh you know it man this movie was so ridiculous and fun and I, I watched it for the second time with my daughter and even she really got into it like wow that was so weird but she was Aww. drawn into it and it's just it's just, it's just a yes it's just a lot of fun so um you know, Jay, I love your rating score, but I wanna I wanna deviate a little bit because there's an un there's a one character throughout this movie that we didn't really address. Okay. And I wanna I want to give my rating in honor of that character. 
Okay. So I'm giving this 76 silent ducks. <laughs> there are a lot of ducks, <laughs> and it's the same footage There's a of lot ducks. of ducks. Yeah. And it's the sound. Hell yeah. The sound cuts out every time they're on screen. It's just a general cutaway of the same ducks. Cool. Paul, what do you got? I mean, what's a town without ducks? You know what I mean? <laughs> nice. Yep. Nice. Yep. Uh, couldn't agree more. I mean, I went into this thinking like, uh, okay, yeah, oh, I kind of totally. get it. Like dog, like kind of Hallmark-ish, you know, sort of like goofy, stupid thing. Five minutes in, I had to get a tissue to stop the blood <laughs> from coming out of my nose. Because you thought your sound, your speakers had broken, right? And right, you were yeah. Worried exactly. about, about replacing them? Exactly, exactly. I, 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 you know, I don't have too many bad things to say. I, I think it's, it's so strange that there are a couple points in the movie where your, your, your brain just sort of says you need to think about something else for a second just to take a, a break from this. But other than that, high praise. Uh, 80. Uh, <laughs> pizza face cinder blocks. <laughs> nice. Okay, Mike Hayes. Uh, you have to wash with your friends. <laughs> like, That's very tough to do I've... right now, Mike. <laughs> Well, I'm sure maybe, who knows, I don't want to promise anything that happened before this, but maybe we watched this on fuckcovid.party, the website I've been running to stream movies to all my friends in COVID. Maybe eventually, Before yeah, this episode be comes out. You know, before, after, keep an eye out for whatever. In general, add, if, if the COVID part is still happening, I've been streaming shit, so... Come come check us out on uh, B Movie Mania on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and uh, we post if we're doing some streaming stuff. It's really fun. We can watch movies like this. Anyway, um, watch with your friends if you can. Uh, fucking don't tell them any. Just tell them it's a talking dog movie. Just tell them it's a talking dog movie. Do not tell them he becomes a man. I love. I just love that reveal. Um, yeah, it's fucking great. It, this is everything the room wishes it was. This is what you need to be watching instead of the room. Uh, this is fantastic. It's really fun. Incorrect. Uh, Ninety green. Oh my god! god. Wow. Awesome. Nine, 90 green. Ninety. Just yeah. Ninety, 90 green. Okay. Just, just green. Okay. All right. Mike. Green. Mike, that was my other alternate uh, <laughs> rating scale. <laughs> frankly, <laughs> j- frank, frankly, Jay, a little bit rude to your selection. Well. Jay, what's your uh, what's your rating? Yeah, you know, okay. When there's an obvious comparison to the room here, <laughs> and <laughs> I think, the, but in a family friendly sort of yeah, way. Yeah, how the room came to be is a whole story. You know, you can look at that and see how it happened. I think there's another universe. There's another timeline where this movie is as big or bigger. I agree, Mike, that it yes. is everything the room wishes it could be. And I like the room or I like it for what it is. It's it falls in th- this movie falls into that category, that kind of movie. Yeah, that's true. Love yeah. on a leash would Agreed. kill at midnight screenings. Yeah. I oh, mean, God. everybody wears green. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. <laughs> There's so <laughs> many fun things you could do it with a midnight screening of this movie. And if our podcast can have anything to do with that happening or, or getting that to happen, getting the word out about this movie, then, then it was this podcast. It was worth doing. Um, this movie just demands to be shared and to be talked about. So Mike, I'm going to match you and give it 90 pizza face cinder blocks. Wow. Yeah, wow. baby. I had so much fun with this. Fuck. Yeah. Jay, Jay, fucking great Thank pick, you. dude. Thank you. Great, great pick. But let me also say, Lisa, you are not a pizza face cinder block. On the next episode of B Movie Mania. You know, guys, I've noticed this season we have had a severe lack of explosions. Oh. You guys oh. like explosions, right? Hell oh, yeah! They like, uh-huh. like lots of guns blasting yeah. away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you like? Do you like bazookas? Mm, I don't know. I've only seen the trailer, so there were there was RPGs. no evidence. I'm out. Fuck it. I'm off. R- no, RPGs. Hey, Mike. 
there were Terminators. So oh, I'm into right. Terminators. The Terminators. Now. Okay, never mind. Do Back you, in the podcast. Do you do you like you know Mortal Kombat Shang Tsung? Okay, maybe that's a, that? that's Is a that little Don the Dragon Wilson. <laughs> that maybe that's a little little too obscure. But uh, how about a young Tom Jane? You guys Tasty! like young Tom Jane, right? I love a young Tom Jane. All right. Well, we are going to watch uh, yet another movie starring a martial artist turned actor that has a bunch of recognizable faces from the director of Cyborg. Oh. So we're going to watch Nemesis. Sweet. I love oh. Star Trek Nemesis. <laughs> Not Star- I've never seen a Star Trek. Oh. I'm excited to okay, watch a Chris, Star Trek. I get the bit that they're doing, but I've seen this movie recently. Yeah. This is going to be fun. Nice. What the fuck I've, is Nemesis? Oh, it's good. I've never seen it, but it's like an early 90s straight to video action movie with lots of like guns, explosions. Oh, dude, Chris, you've never just, seen it? No. No. <laughs> he rolled the dice. Oh, okay, yes. We I I will I will tell you we're in for a treat. Nice. It's good. It looked I've I've seen this everywhere and something about it is all, I got to watch that sometime. Yep. And now is the perfect opportunity. So, my last pick of the season, Nemesis. So th- so this is the uh main bad guy in Resident Evil 2, Nemesis? No. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B-Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woohoo! You can watch Nemesis on Amazon Prime. Also, Tubi and Crack. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, cool. Sure. <laughs> if you want to watch an inferior, commercially laced product. And the Shell Oil Our original nice. streaming service. <laughs> and Costco streaming service. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> wow, Mailchimp. What? Oh my god! Wait, the Mailchimp, the fucking—it's uh, <laughs> like a like a well hung chimp. <laughs>